Tonight on Ham Nation, we're going to talk about youth on the air with Marty NN1C. You see the license plate over my head, the WA6ITF license plate? We're going to talk about the Newsline special event. We got that plate from Bill's daughter. Thank you, Kelly. We love you so much. Uh, we're going to talk about Burning Man at Quartz Fest. Have video for you from that. Pretty cool stuff. Actually, it's hot because, well, he's burning. Also, Arduino smoking solder. That's burning, too. And George, and he's kind of hot. Did I say that out loud? Hmm. All that, Newsline, and more on Ham Nation. Ham Nation is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is, is Twit. twit. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. Most in-stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit dxengineering.com slash hamnation. And by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation. This is Ham Nation, episode 440 for February 12th, 2020. Yoda, WA6ITF, Arduinos, and more. Hey, good evening, everybody. It is Wednesday night at 8 o'clock Central, and that means it is Ham Nation time. And uh, tonight, it's kids' night. Well, no, not really. We're not really kids. We have one youth, and we're going to talk about youth, but I say kids' night because the grown-ups are out of town. That's right. Bob and Gordo, they're out of here. So uh, you have the inmates running the asylum. Uh, Just to my north and straight above me there uh, up in Jackson, Mississippi, where the rain is rapidly approaching and the thunder, uh, we have uh, George, W5JDX. Hey, buddy, what's going on? Hey, Don. Well, it's wet and it's been wet and it's going to be wet. Uh, We are preparing an ark out here. I think we're going to need it before this is over. I've got a a video tonight. We're going to talk a little more about the uh, Arduinos and getting started programming them. So uh, if you're one of the people who told me, yeah, I, I've bought mine now, I'm waiting. So we'll kind of be starting tonight again. Some more still. Mm-hmm. And we, we might we might uh, say that that arc is going to be of the nautical variety and not of the uh, the electrical variety. I mean, this is a ham radio show. You say arc and all of a sudden, you think of sparks, but uh, it's, it's a whole different thing. Somebody in the chat room said tonight that that uh, just now that Marty is the only adult on the screen, and that's probably <laughs> about right. Uh, we have Marty, NN1C, Marty Soloway, who's going to talk about uh, youth on the air. How are you doing tonight over there in I'm the I'm doing past great. And- it's always fantastic to be on Ham Nation. There is no better place to be at 9 o'clock on a Wednesday night. So uh, great to be here. We're going to have a lot of fun, lots of good stuff to talk about tonight. Awesome. And yeah, I can't wait to uh, talk about youth on the air. And also, while we're talking about youth, let's, uh, and I'm sorry I blew his call on Facebook yesterday. KG5HVO, is that right? Did I say that right? Yep. Marty proofreads me. Uh, he's my he's my proofer. Uh, uh, that was, um, uh, his 16th birthday was yesterday. That is Bryant Rascal, who's the 2018 Newsline Young Ham of the Year Award winner. So happy birthday, Bryant. 16. My God. The kids are taking over, and it uh, uh, I love it so much. Heading out towards Colorado, we have Amanda and uh, K1DDN. And Amanda and I had a whole lot of fun over the weekend with the Amateur Radio Newsline, Amateur Radio Club special event station for uh, for Bill's birthday. Amanda, how many contacts did you make? You, you made a, a good number, didn't you? I did. I think I made about 115, and uh, it was a blast. And uh, happy birthday, Bryant, by the way. Uh, a kid um, who has accomplished more in ham radio than I think I will in my whole lifetime already at the age of 16. So anyhow, WA6ITF, that was a, a really fun time operating as that call sign and explaining the background to a lot of people. And as so many people listen every week. So fun times. Yeah, it was it was a great time. I uh, I made... Almost a hundred, 
Uh, James Pasterfield out in uh, Sevenland, he made over 100. He's one of the Newsline staffers. You don't really hear him so much, but he's very important uh, to uh, – he, he manages the Newsline, the, uh, the, the Facebook page, and does some web stuff as well. And uh, we had a few others on there. Karen Eve Murray got on and made a few contacts, and uh, we had a great time. Uh, all in all, just, uh, just over 300 contacts. And I want to share something with you while we're talking about this, the recap of the special event. We decided to form the uh, Amateur Radio Newsline Amateur Radio Club last year. We fi re finally got it formed last year after talking about it for about a year. And we knew that there was only one call sign that, that we wanted, and that was WA6ITF. So uh, Kelly Leonard, uh, Bill's daughter, who is N6PNY, she helped us get Bill's license canceled because Bill's license was still active. He was still in the 10-year period. So that's how we got WA6ITF. And I got a little note uh, today from Kelly that I want to share with you. This is really cool. Let's see if I can make, the, make it through this without crying. Um, <laughs> congratulations. What an exciting moment in time. Thank you to everyone who has taken part in Bill's memory. Please accept Bill's personalized plates to commemorate your new venture. 73N6PNY, Kelly Leonard. Look what Kelly sent to us. This is epic. Bravo. Bravo. And I, I don't know if it's the age or just the state of California drivers or Bill's driving, but look how beat up that front plate is. <laughs> that thing is. <laughs> but anyway, so um, we're going to put this in a place of honor right now before we go any further. Bear with me here. Sticking. I think that'll work. There we go. That's 3M uh, automotive trim tape, so hopefully it'll stay. If it doesn't, I'll just tack it back up. So there we go. We're official. So, and thanks to everybody who took the time out over the weekend to uh, make contact with WA6ITF. We're going to make that an annual event for Bill's birthday every year. And we'll try to do a few more activations. Uh, as uh, the year goes on, but um, such a thrill, such an honor to put WA6ITF back on the air where it belongs, five years after Bill became a silent key, so just the best. All right, let's uh, go ahead and, and uh, get started on the show. We've got uh, some good stuff from, uh, uh, well, Quartzfest was recently. Uh, we're going to, I guess we'll have a recap of... Um, of uh, Orlando uh, next week. We we're going to try to get uh, Joe Eisenberg on tonight, K0NEB, to talk about Orlando, but he had a club meeting to go to, so we'll try to get a, 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 a Florida recap as soon as we can. But uh, Quartz Fest was uh, big this year, and uh, Randy has his uh, little burning ham video from Quartz Fest. So let's go ahead and enjoy that now. 2013 was our first year for burning ham, man. Gordo sent me a message a couple months before uh, Quartz Fest and said, why can't we do a Burning Man? And then we heard, like Gordo said, people complained about Burning Ham because that was already in use. So Gordo said, let's call him Burning Ham Man. And we decided we'll come out here and do that. Maryland built our first Burning Ham. And... Uh, Had help a long way, different people, but Aaron's been... Uh, <laughs> This invisible person over here. Last couple of years, he's been the other yeah, half. Yeah. Now, for those on Ham Nation oh, wondering, so cool. uh, is this safe? Um, no. It is not. <laughs> yeah, that's watered down all right. Woo! There we go. You're hot. You're hot. Yeah, feel it over here. Whoa! All right, oh. we just lost the uh, paper filled belly. The belly. <laughs> you did a great job. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right. That's a good fire. 
and it hasn't fallen over and killed anybody yet. <laughs> that was our biggest fear. Yeah. Thanks everybody for standing back. The hair is going. The hair is here. going. It, it's doing a nice job burning, isn't it? <laughs> this is about three pallets of wood that we borrowed. I mean, uh, we're given from the local lumber yard where we live up in the San Bernardino Mountains. And I'm so glad I don't have to haul this back home. Yeah, we don't have to haul <laughs> This actually lasted longer than I thought it would. Oh, no, this, but this is going to be, it's going to be burning there. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Actually, this will be a wonderful energy. <laughs> How many would like to do Burning Man next year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't want to push it down on the audience here. Isn't it great out here? When I left home, it was about, oh, 29 degrees and icy and foggy and windy and just downright miserable. And it's so nice to feel warm. Yep, there goes an elbow is almost ready. Oh, Front row, you might want to move just a little bit. Kind of like at the Shamu show, you're going to get it. And it stayed in the ring. How about that? Thank you guys again for doing that. This is awesome. Did you notice that actual imitation faux handheld? That's great. Uh, I remember the first time they did it, they had actual handhelds on there. And uh, I guess, I don't know, maybe they couldn't they couldn't find any old uh, old handhelds or something on there. But that's, that's cool. Randy, thanks for, for sending that along. I'm going to make Quartz Fest uh, one of these years. That is on my bucket list. All right. We're going to have uh, Amateur Radio Newsline here coming up next. No Tamitha tonight. She has been under the weather, unfortunately. So... Uh, help me uh, uh, help me wish her all the best to to get a little bit better so we we can have her back. But wasn't she amazing? All of the ladies were amazing last week on uh, Ham's Gone Wild 2.0. Uh, we also have uh, Marty going to talk about Youth on the Air. That's coming up. George has uh, his uh, smoke and solder stuff and some more stuff from uh, Randy, I believe. But first, let's uh, talk about... Uh, a little bit about DX engineering. And, you know, for you DXers anticipating the chance to put South Orkney Island in your logbook, the wait's almost over. The 2020 VP8 Papa Juliet South Orkney Islands DXpedition is practically here. And DX engineering is, of course, a proud sponsor of this major undertaking to activate the 16th most wanted DXCC entity. Here are the details. The Perseverance DX Group is scheduled to be QRV from Signy Island from February 20th to March 5th. Man, that's right around the corner. The team of experienced operators will be working 160 through 10, SSB, CW, RTTY, and FT8, and unless otherwise noted, they're going to be operating in split mode. They ask you not to call them unless you can hear them. Wait until propagation and conditions favor your QTH for one or more of the bands and modes, and uh, VP8 PJ marks the first major de expedition to this rarely activated island group since the successful VP8 ORK de expedition. And hard to believe, but that was nine years ago. And the folks at DX Engineering are pleased to have a range of their own branded gear making the journey to South Orkney. The VP8 Papa Juliet operators will be relying on DX Engineering. Uh, for instance, the PVC insulated 14 gauge stranded copper premium antenna wire. Features 92.5 pounds of braking strength, phased array quarter wave tuned cables constructed to ensure optimum pattern control and gain from phased antenna systems, pre assembled radial wire kits that come with ring terminals crimped and soldered on one end for the 14 gauge uh, stranded copper wire, and other DX engineering gear that will be used includes RG8 and uh, RG8U 50 ohm bulk coaxial cable. Next generation crimp solder 8U PL259 connectors, low loss 50 ohm cable assemblies, and 75 ohm quad shield cable assemblies. And if you're looking to upgrade your station for serious DXing, you cannot go wrong by using the equipment trusted by top DX expeditioners. You'll find everything you need at dxengineering.com. Plus, you'll receive knowledgeable advice from longtime hams who will be joining you in the South Orkney pileups. And DX Engineering, you know this. 
ships faster than anybody else in the industry. Most orders placed by 10 p.m. Eastern are shipped the same day. Proven products and expert advice, DX Engineering is helping you shrink the globe. Request your catalog or shop online 24-7 at dxengineering.com slash ham nation. Thank you, DX Engineering, for your support of what we do here on Ham Nation. Now let's get the news of the week from Amateur Radio Newsline. From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 2,206, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, February 12, 2020. Our top story comes from Washington, D.C., where the Federal Communications Commission is marking what its chairman calls a historic appointment. The FCC has welcomed the first woman to serve as its chief technology officer, coordinating with the agency's Office of Engineering and Technology and advising chairman Agent Pai on related issues. Monisha Gosh, a fellow of the IEEE, has expertise in wireless technologies where she has overseen research in both academia and industry. Her new responsibilities began on January 13th. The agency called the appointment historic and the FCC chairman said he hoped she would serve as an example for young women considering careers in STEM disciplines. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Andy Morrison, K9AWM. The ranks of American heroes are diminished once more as another Navajo code talker from the World War II era has died. Joe Vandiver Sr., one of the Navajo code talkers who served in the U.S. Marine Corps during World War II, has died in New Mexico. He was among those whose tribal language gave rise to an unbreakable code used during the war. After enlisting in the Marines in 1943, he served in the occupation of Japan, the occupation of China, Guam, Okinawa, and numerous other locations. The National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C. notes that the Code Talker's contributions in several important wartime campaigns are credited with saving thousands of lives of Americans and United States allies. Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez issued the following statement after the announcement of his death. The Navajo people have lost another great warrior who sacrificed more than we'll ever know to defend our country. On behalf of the Navajo Nation, we offer our prayers and heartfelt condolences to his children and many other loved ones. Joe Vandiver, who died Friday, January 31st, was 96. There are now only a handful of Navajo code talkers remaining. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Ralph Squillace, KK6ITB. If attending college is in your immediate future, here's a chance to get some assistance through a scholarship program just for hams. If you're a college-bound amateur radio operator or you're a ham who's been accepted into an accredited college, university, or technical school, you may be eligible for a scholarship administered by the Foundation for Amateur Radio. Applications are being accepted from HAMS anywhere in the world through April 30th. The scholarship covers the academic year 2020 to 2021. A variety of scholarships are being offered, including the Chichester Memorial Scholarship and the Scholarship from the Quarter Century Wireless Association. All applicants are considered for all of the scholarships for which they may be qualified. For an application and additional details about each scholarship's requirement, visit the Foundation website at farweb.org. A reminder, although the deadline is April 30th, additional amendments may be made to applications until the 7th of May. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Stephen Kinford, N8WB. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at arnewsline.org. With Andy Morrison, K9AWM, Ralph Squalacci, KK6ITB, Stephen Kenford, N8WB, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York, and our news team across the globe, I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. And thank you to the Ham Nation, uh, the Amateur Radio Newsline uh, crew for... Uh, uh, for some great reports for the last 40 plus years. Hard to believe Newsline's been going that long. And uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Tamitha Scove. Uh, sadly, not with us tonight because she's been feeling under the weather. But of course, check her out on Twitter at Tamitha Scove and uh, go to spaceweatherwoman.com and find out uh, all of the latest information about solar weather and how it relates to what we do on the ham bands. And uh, I had a story about the. Uh, about the scholarships there. Uh, we're, we're talking about youth and amateur radio, and uh, currently ongoing this week is School Club Roundup. So get on HF and uh, see if you can contact some of those School Club Roundup stations. And uh, speaking of youth, the Youth on the Air 
is uh, continuing. And that is why we have Marty Soloway in N1C uh, with us tonight. Marty, uh, Marty, let's talk a little bit about how you got started in ham radio and how long you've been a ham. Uh, sure, so tell us a little bit about uh, your Neil, background uh, for those who maybe Don. who maybe may not know you uh, uh, like like we do. Sure. So my name is Marty and N1C. I'm located in uh, cold and snowy Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I've been a radio ham uh, for a little bit north of uh, five years. I'm an extremely active uh, radio sport contester and DXer. Uh, some of you know me as my with my other call sign Zulu Foxtrot to Lima Zulu. I operate down in the Cayman Islands. Uh, but I was I became interested in ham radio by finding it on the internet, and uh, the hobby has just uh, grown over time. I got my general and got on HF, and then my extra class license in uh, 2016. So I've been really fortunate. Amateur radio has kind of encapsulated my middle school and high school experience and given me so many fantastic uh, opportunities. I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm quite active in youth and contesting and DXing and, and technical projects for the amateur radio community. And uh, so when the opportunity came to become more involved with Yoda 2020 in uh, Cincinnati, I just had to I just had to take the bite because it's really fantastic. And of course, uh, what was your original call? You weren't in N1C out of the gate. What was your original call? No, it was a great uh, phonetic, K by the way. Uh, KC1 CWF, uh, chicken with fries. Um, chicken with so, fries. Uh, right. Yeah, there you go. Now we're just NN1 Still chicken. And you'll uh, you'll forever be known as Chicken with Fries to those of us who uh, who have known you for a while. And what year was it that uh, you were awarded the Bill Pasternak WA6 ITF Memorial Amateur Radio Newsline Young Ham of the Year Award? Uh, 2017, I believe. Yeah. So uh, it's it's been a while, and uh, a while. We're so proud to have you as uh, as a uh, as an alumnus of uh, that cool club. That's that seriously is the Cool Kids Club right there. The Young Ham of the Year Award winners, and of course, uh, happy birthday to 2018 winner uh, uh, Bryant Rascal yesterday, 16 years old yesterday, so a happy birthday to him. All right, let's talk about Youth on the Air. Tell us mm -hmm. uh, all about it and how to participate and how to support it, and just give us the whole rundown. Well, Yoda is this uh, really uh, exciting uh, program that uh, uh, was originally uh, popular in Yoda Region 1 and IARU Region 1 in Europe and uh, Asia. But has uh, finally come to the United States uh, through the hard work of many, uh, including Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, who is known and loved to us here on Ham Nation. Uh, so uh, YOTA, or Youth on the Air Camp, uh, which will be in uh, uh, June of 2020, this, this early summer, uh, will be a, a nearly week-long uh, camp for young people on amateur radio. So ages 15 to 25. Uh and the idea is it's skills-based. There are workshops led by other youth uh, that will give uh, young people skills in amateur radio that they might not have, uh, give them opportunities to meet young people, uh, other young people in amateur radio, other uh, specialists in amateur radio, and really a week-long opportunity to gain so much in knowledge and information about ham radio while at the same time having a fantastic, fun experience uh, in beautiful Cincinnati at the Voice of America Museum. So we are so excited about uh, Yoda 2020. And the big news this week is that applications are now open and there is not a lot of time to apply. Uh, you have a little bit more than a month. Uh, Yoda applications uh, close on March 20, uh, on March 15th. Uh, so the camp is open to anybody ages 15 to 25. It costs uh, just $100. We are so grateful for all of the um, uh, the donors and sponsors that have made uh, Yoda possible, including ICOM America and Yasmi and WWROF, Heil Sound, uh, NCDXF, just to name a few, as, long with, as well as uh, the ARRL Foundation. Uh, so that's uh, been a subsidized cost of just $100 for the whole week of fantastic programming, uh, which includes uh, staying at a hotel from uh, the Sunday, uh, the June 21st, until uh, uh, Friday, June 26th, which is, actually, which is actually just before field day. Um with great, uh, lots of great um, programming during the week. Uh, so all the youth has to do is cover the cost of getting to Cincinnati. Uh, there are shuttles that will pick students up at the airport or campers up at the airport and $100 for the whole week with a scholarship available for those who need. Um, and they're looking to have between 20 and 30 campers. Uh, so I'm going to be leading a workshop with uh, Bryant, uh, KG5HVO, on contesting. I know there is a... Uh, 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 
scavenger hunt at a, a theme park using uh, radio direction finding, fox hunting, um, a kit build, uh, lots of fantastic programming during uh, Yoda Camp 2020. I know it's going to be uh, just an, an amazing opportunity. So uh, for all the young people listening, or if you know a young person, uh, now is the time to send them to the website youth uh, youthontheair.org, and you can click on the Cincinnati 2020 button and uh, apply. Uh, it's not a very hard application. Uh, just ask about um, you know what you do, how old are you, how old you are, your background in amateur radio, and uh, we're super excited about that. Uh, and the other thing is, as I mentioned, uh, this is trying to be a subsidized program, right? $100 obviously does not cover the cost of each student uh, for a week of uh, fantastic amateur radio opportunities. Um, so uh, we are asking for money. I'm not shy there. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, but if you go to that website, youthontheair.org, and uh, click the donate button, uh, please support this because this is this is really uh, the next generation of amateur radio operator, operators learning critical skills uh, that that they will be able to take home and use with uh, on the air and in their amateur radio community. So uh, if there's something you're going to support in 2020 around amateur radio, uh, this is a good option. Uh, the big news as far as that is during the month of February, uh, their a very generous donor uh, agreed to match all donations. So whatever you're donating during the month month of February, you're really donating twice that. Um, so it's really just a super exciting time uh, for the youth. An amazing week at the uh, Voice of America Museum of Broadcasting uh, in North Cincinnati. Um, the application is free, and uh, it's it's really just uh, fantastic. All the campers that apply by March 15th uh, will uh, uh, be selected and notified by the end of March if they were accepted. And uh, this isn't just for the states. It's North, Central, and South America. So for all of my friends in Central America and uh, Canada and South America, this is certainly a program for you. And uh, uh, we are holding spots for you international people. So we really hope uh, that uh, people will come. Right now, we're slotted for 20 students. Uh, but if we can uh, raise financial support to cover the hotel expenses and operating expenses and supervision expenses, uh, we hope to be able to accommodate more students. A big a part of this is uh, bringing together youth in a safe manner, and uh, we've certainly uh, taken a lot of thought into doing that. So we are so, so excited uh, for Yoda Cincinnati 2020. I think it's great. And let me tell you something. With this uh, matching donations for the month of February, if you've been looking for a way to give something back to amateur radio, to a hobby that has meant so much to you in your lifetime as it's meant to me and mine, and you're looking for a way to give give back and uh, and foster the future of the hobby, this is the perfect way, and especially since there are matching donations now. So if you want to invest in the future of ham radio, literally, literally invest in the future of ham radio, which is the youth, this is prime time to do it. There, are, You will not you will not spend money any better way than than by doing this. I guarantee you and that. I, and the I can venue, assure you that fantastic, right? incredible venue. Yes, the, 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 the Voice the of America Museum, Museum is fantastic. And it's a monster station. It's just, it's amazing. And the, the great people uh, that are in that club, uh, so supportive, uh, Jocelyn Bro and his family uh, come to mind immediately. Um, just, just the best, and you're you're gonna love it. Your kid, the kids are gonna love it. It's gonna be so. Let's fantastic. talk a little bit about the, yeah, about the the VOA station. What what all's there? I mean, I've operated there. You've operated there. It's a, it's an amazing place. Amazing, uh, amazing place. Big antennas, uh, power amplifiers. Icom America has agreed to provide uh, not just radios for that station during the week for uh, campers to use, but also more radios at the hotel. Uh, for a, a, another radio station, as well as having remote access to the VOA station. So there's going to be so much ham radio, crazy good station, lots of DX to work. We'll be on the air all week at the VOA. Uh, in the incredible history there, uh, just a fantastic place to learn. And I know it's going to be just incredible. And I wish I could go. There's Bryant right there. I wish I could go. Man, I wish I could go. I want to go. I want to be a kid again. I, you know, I never got to do space camp, and I'm not able to get to do this. And I feel like I've really missed out. I really do. But I'm having the time of my life with amateur radio now, and to be able to help spread the word on this in in any way that we can, we're just we're more than thrilled. We're just uh, more than thrilled, and we're we're so proud of of you, Marty, and everybody else who's involved in this. Um, who are some of the other uh, uh, mentors or operators that you're going to have on there besides you and Brian? 
Uh, Bryant will be there. Myself will be there. Uh, Sterling Coffee and Zero SSC will be there. Uh, you mentioned uh, Jocelyn yeah. and yeah. Uh, and Neil. Uh, so really a, a fantastic crew. I know there's some really good presentations coming together that are in the works. Um, so it's it's really just a fantastic experience. And you said it better than I could, ever could. If there's one donation in the amateur radio sphere that you are going to make this year, this one will go directly to the youth of amateur radio and make a tangible difference. Uh, we want this yeah. to have. We want there to be no barriers to entry, if possible, uh, to get a international community of young people together uh, in the in the Americas to really talk about amateur radio. Uh, and and hopefully the goal is that everybody who comes will have a lot to take back to their communities and uh, further spread their love of radio and the skills they learn. So it's really, really fantastic. This program has been a long time in the work. It's, it's really done well. They've jumped through all the hoops. Uh, there are, this is no sketchy ham fest. This is a professionally run camp. Uh, you are safe. Your children are safe. Um, it's clean. There's supervision. And uh, it's just going to be a fantastic experience. Again, if you're 15 to 25, youthontheair.org is where you find it. Uh, you can apply and donate most importantly, and there's even more information. So I am just so excited uh, for Yoda 2020. It's, it's, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I am too. Youthontheair.org. That is where you want to go. Marty, thanks for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. And uh, you're, a, you're a great spokesperson for amateur radio, and we're so proud also that that you're a, a Young Ham of the Year uh, recipient for Amateur Radio Newsline. Bill would be so proud of you. I know uh, he would It's be. a tremendous honor, and uh, uh, that that event last weekend was just so moving, and it means so much to have that played up sticking out of the back of your head right now. Um, yeah, Bill, and, 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 I, and you're in my log. You're in my log. I'm you, in your log. In my I'm log. in your log. You're in my log, yes. It's, it's crazy right. to think it's been five years. Well, I know. So special. I know. I know. It really, it really is. Well, anyway, my friend, thank you so much for coming on the Ham Nation tonight and uh, spreading the word about uh, Youth on the Air. Youthontheair.org, is that it? Yep. Uh, youthontheair.org, and all the information you need is there. All right. Marty Soloway, NN1C, uh, a great ambassador uh, for the youth and for amateur radio and just, uh, just an all-around pretty good guy. So uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, for, uh, thanks for being on here, my friend. We appreciate you. 73, thank you. All right. Uh, we are going to uh, go over to George and see what's going on with Smoke and Sonder. George, I'm sorry, but this is going to be a pretty a pretty hard act to follow here. You uh, you got your work cut out for you. Well, Don, just just watching how professionally Marty interacted with you, with his level of excitement, you know, he could have a promising future in broadcasting. We, we should no, get him some he's, help he's, right away. No, he's no, he's smarter than that. Stay away from broadcasting. Yeah, well, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to be sure that he didn't suffer the same fate as, uh, you know, us. maybe some us. of the rest of us, us there. Yeah, us, exactly. So, us, exactly. No, it sounds, and, you know, Marty's a, a great guy there. It's always fun to see him at the various town fest around. And the voice of American Museum, you know, what can you say about that? It is... Um, Really a great facility, a great club there as well. So that is going to be a great event. Well, this past weekend, uh, myself, Professor Thomas, and Dean Martin began our extra class at Ham College. We're studying for the extra now. And apparently there's a lot more folks that are interested in extra than we anticipated. Um, I guess we've got a lot of people that are generals out there and they're wanting to uh, you know, take that next step and jump into extra. Uh, so we've started studying for that now, and it's going to take a while to get through it all. But uh, you can check that out, hamcollege.tv. I got to tell you, these questions are tougher than the general. I don't didn't remember how tough they were. But, uh, yeah, and, you know, the poll has just changed. It doesn't go into effect till July, but we're... We're studying on the uh, the new pool there. And I know Gordo has been editing on his new book. So you're going to want to get that, the, the new extra class um, study guide, as soon as it's available. Not sure the published date on that, but uh, we'll find out and, and let you know on that. Because, you know, definitely Gordo's books 
are the best study resource you can have when you're studying for a ham radio exam. Uh, and Friday night, uh, we're going to be doing the next Amateur Logic, uh, 8 o'clock Central, 0200 UC, UTC at AmateurLogic.com. I'm not sure where UC time is, but um, anyway... Join us over there at live.amateurlogic.tv. If you're looking for something to do Friday night, you know that IC705 that we looked at here recently. Uh, Ray was here uh, a few weeks ago. We shot an in-depth video of it. We got to play with it a lot. And that is available now on the ICOM America YouTube channel. So you can go check out more about that. And we're going to have a little bit of that Friday night as well as some stuff that didn't make it into that video. Some some footage that we held back because of, well, time constraints. It was running too long, but it was such good stuff on some great antennas and things that uh, you'll, you'll probably want to check that out too. So live.amateurlogic.tv, Friday night. Join us over there and learn more about that. Well, you know, right here on Smoke and Solder, we've been talking about getting started with Arduinos uh, this will be part three tonight, and we're we're still not quite to the point where we start typing on the keyboard there and watching the magic happen. We're getting prepared for that. I promise next time we'll we'll jump right in on that. But tonight, you know, we probably need to talk a little bit about the vocabulary that you're going to want to use when you start doing this. There's a lot of uh, keywords that that are available there. You don't need to know them all. All you need to know is this reference page that we're going to look at and get started there. And anytime you need to know how to do something, just go back there and, and you've got resources right at your fingertips, as well as there's a lot of source code that people have put out on the internet. You can download to find to do most anything that you want to do. Just uh, download the code that someone has shared it out there, look through it, make the uh, minor or major changes, whatever that you want to, to tailor it to your application. It's really not that difficult. So here we go, part three of getting started with Arduinos. This is part three of our smoke and solder segments on getting started with Arduino. Programming reference and introduction. The first thing I want to show you here is a great resource that you'll want to bookmark and come back to frequently. We go to the Arduino.cc website, and we go under Resources and go to Reference. The address is Arduino.cc slash reference slash en. This page will show you all the keywords that are used in the programming language, the functions, variables, structures, and more. And it's going to be invaluable when you're going through trying to write a program or dissect one to see how they did it. Let's take a look at some of the things at this page. The functions are for controlling the Arduino board and performing computations. We've got a number of them here. Now, these will vary a little bit, not greatly. They're mostly the same for all of the Arduino models, but some of the larger models use a different microcontroller chip and therefore might have some different functions. We'll start out with the basic ones here. At the top, digital I.O. You know, we looked at the I.O. pins last time and we discussed being able to turn them on, turn them off, or look for highs and lows coming to them. Here are some of the functions we can do with those pins. Digital read for reading to see if there's a high or a low on a particular pin. Digital write, which means we can set a particular pin, high or low, doing an output. And pin mode. Let's look a little closer at those. Pin mode allows us to specify how we want to configure that particular pin on the Arduino. Do we want it to be used as an input or do we want it to be used as an output? The syntax is very simple here. It's pin mode. Behind that, inside of parentheses, we have the pin number, and then a comma, and then the mode we want to set it to. Well, of course, the pin number you can take directly off the Arduino board there. There are only three modes that we need to look at. 
We can set that pin to be an input. We can set it to be an output. Or we can set it to be an input and use an internal pull-up resistor that's inside the chip so that we don't have to use external pull-up resistors. An example is right here. If we look in the setup section of this program, pin mode, and they're setting pin 13 as an output. Simple enough. Now that allows us to specify what each pin will do. And then depending on whether we set the pin mode to input or output, we'll determine whether or not we want to do a digital read or a digital write. If we wanted to read what's at that pin, well, let's click on digital read here and see what the syntax is. All we need really is digital read and in parentheses, the pin number. It's going to return either a high or a low, and these are in all caps. And an example down here, well, let's just look where they're actually doing it. They are saying a value, which is just a variable here. In this case, we see it's an integer. Value equals digital read, and in parentheses, the input pin, which was set up here to be an integer and equal to the number 13. So we're just reading what's ever on pin 13. Is it high or is it low? There are a number of other functions here. There's also an analog read. Uh, you can set an analog reference. An analog write, which we talked about last time, that some of the pins on the Arduino are capable of doing pulse width modulation. That's what's used for analog write. I mentioned a moment ago some of the family of the microcontrollers used on the Arduinos are different than others. Most of them are the 18 mega chips, but there are some others. In this case, the Model Zero, the Do, and the MKR family of Arduinos have these other analog functions. We've got math functions that we can use. Now, we're not going to look at all these. Trigonometry, a random number generator. We can do bit and byte operations. Uh, we can do interrupts, which is way beyond what we're going to talk about here. Uh, we've got functions for characters where we can tell if a character is ASCII or is it lowercase or uppercase, a number of things. We've got advanced I.O., which we've got functions like tone, no tone, which would turn off a tone, pulse, shift ins and outs. We've got some time functions like delay, which is a very simple little function. You'll use this quite frequently. It's basically just the word delay, and then in parentheses, the number of milliseconds to delay for. We've got some communications functions, too. We've got serial and stream. The only one that we really use is serial here, and that's how we can send data into the Arduino over the USB port, which is actually being used as just a regular old RS-232 serial port, or we can read data back from the Arduino if we want to use that in our project. And then there's a little information here on keyboard and mice. There's a number of different variables or data types that we can use. If you remember the old new math in school when that came out decades ago, or maybe you've used algebra, you're going to have variables. That's where we have oh, an expression like A plus B equals C or whatever. All computer languages use variables like that so that you can assign numbers or different values to labels that you can reference in your code. We've got constants. They're like variables, but they can only be set once. After that, they can't be changed. We've got functions here to do conversions between the different types of variables. But then the main data types, we've got strings, which are like characters. You could use it for text. You could put numbers in it if you're not using them really for value. We've got arrays, which are a little beyond what we're going to discuss here right now. Bool or Boolean are the same thing. This is a type like true or false. There's only two states. Uh, this particular variable can be true or it can be false, which is the same thing as saying it can be a 1 or a 0. We've got bytes. Uh, characters, double, float, floating point numbers are numbers that have decimal places in it. Uh, probably one of the most used variable is going to be the type integer. If we look at integer, it is a number. It's 16 bits, 
It's stored in two 8-bit bytes. And an integer is a number anywhere between minus 32,768 to positive 32,767. So an integer can either be negative or positive. If you need a number larger than that, then you might want to use a data type like a long. A long is like an integer in that it stores a number, and it can be either negative or positive, but it can store a much larger number since it uses 4 bytes for storage. A long can range in value from a negative 2,147,483,767 to 2,147,483,674. So you might ask, why would we even consider using an integer? Well, there's a good reason for that. The amount of memory we've got available to our program is limited. So why waste extra storage space when a smaller number of bits would handle the job? So that's what it is. It's all about conserving space, thereby giving us more room for our program to operate and actually the program operating faster because it doesn't have to deal with quite as large of possible values. And there's a number of other types here, like unsigned character, unsigned integer. Just like the integer we looked at before, except instead of starting at minus 32,000, etc., it starts at zero and goes to positive 65,535. An unsigned integer can only be positive. It can't be negative, so it doesn't have a sign. We've also got unsigned longs, unsigned characters, voids, which is basically nothing, and words, which we're not going to discuss here. Variable scope describes where in the program these particular variables can be accessed. We might not want to give all sections of the program access to all the variables. They call the programs sketches. Inside there, we've got two main sections. We've got one section for a loop, another section for setup. We've got control structures where we can tell it to break the program at a particular point, to continue, to do a certain thing while a certain condition is met. We can say if one thing is the case, if not else, we branch somewhere else. We've got four statements, go to's, return, switch statements that let us select various cases of what a variable might be, and a while statement that says keep doing this while this condition is met. We've got arithmetic operators like um, the remainder, multiplication, which is star, addition, subtraction, a forward slash for division, or and equal for assignment operators. You can do comparisons like not equal to, less than, less than or equal to. Check the equality of something by using equal twice in a row, or the greater than symbol, or greater than or equal to. We've got pointer access operators, which is a little beyond our scope here. Bitwise operators, which we won't need for the things we're talking about here. Compound operators, which do more specialized things that we won't really cover, at least not at this point. More syntax like define, include, we won't really talk about right now. And Boolean operators, like a logical not, or an and and, which is a logical and, or a, a logical or, which is actually two pipe characters. That is the character on your keyboard right above the backslash. If you hold shift and you press that, that is called a pipe. Remember, you can go back to this page right here and find the various things when you're looking at programs or trying to determine how you would do something. This is a great place to start. And Arduino has made this stuff so much easier than it previously was to do. Now, you know, there's other uh, chips out there like the PICs and the basic stamps, and they all basically do the same thing, but there's such a huge community out there on the Arduino now that it's, it's very easy to get started with, and we're going to do that next week. We're going to do some very simple things. The first thing I want to do is talk about 
Oh, maybe do an example like uh, some logic gates, you know, like, like we would build with TTL or CMOS chips and show what that code would look like in an Arduino. And, you know, just, just some very simple little things there. We're not going to get real in-depth with this, but I do want to uh, give you enough information to get your feet wet and see just how simple it is to do. Well, speaking of getting your feet wet, it is really coming down out there tonight, and it's been doing that for almost two or three weeks now. So uh, I I think I'm going to put my feet up on some blocks or something here to keep them from <laughs> getting in the water because it's getting deep out there. And we'll, we'll be back in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at that ICOM rig we were talking about a little earlier, uh, the IC705. Get out and be active with ICOM's new IC705 and its optional multifunction backpack. The IC705 is your perfect QRP companion as you have base station features and functionality at the tips of your fingers in a portable package covering HF 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. This compact rig weighs in at 1 kilo or just over 2 pounds. With RF direct sampling for most of the HF band and IF sampling for frequencies above 25 megahertz, 5 volt battery operation with BP272 or 10 watts with a 13.8 volt DC supply. Modes include single sideband, CW, AM, FM, as well as full D star functions, a large 4.3 inch color touchscreen, and live band scope with waterfall. Integrated GPS with antenna and GPS logger, micro SD card for data storage, it comes standard with the HM243 speaker microphone, and it supports QRP and QRPP operations. The perfect accessory for the IC705 is the LC192 optional backpack with a special compartment for your IC705 and room for accessories for soda activations or just a day in the park. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information about this and all the great ICOM radios. And uh, thanks, ICOM, for sponsoring Ham Nation there. Well, Randy's got a quick announcement here. You know, he's working on the next uh, Show Us Your Projects videos right now. So, uh, Randy, tell us about it. Hi, Randy, K7AGE. I have too many projects, not enough time. We'd like to see your projects of what you're working on. Are you restoring any old ham gear? Are you building something new, doing some 3D printing, building an antenna? The Ham Nation viewers would like to see your project. So take some photos and write up a little description and send it to me at hamprojects at twit.tv. That's hamprojects at twit.tv. See you on the show. 73. Okay. Thanks, Randy. And uh, always some great videos there from him. Well, Amanda is over in the chat room. Amanda, what a great show uh, you and all the ladies had last week. We, we thoroughly enjoyed kicking back and watching y'all take the reins. Well, thank you, George. It, it was a blast, by the way. And um, the brilliance that was brought into that show by all of our guests um, blew me away. So I hope it blew all of our viewers away as well. Now I have a special um, announcement here. Not really an announcement, but I have a special visitor. So who is that visitor? <gasps> who is that guy? Me? How about? <laughs> well, the question is, is like, where am I? Uh, uh, well, you know, I'm in, I've been in and out of here for months. Well, here's been part of it. I am in Pleasant Hope. But I'll take it. it. Might make you a little dizzy here. I'm going to do a little zing around. Remember all the gear that was in this room? Well, there's nothing in this room. Just nothing. All the shelves are bare. All the radios are in Belleville. Well, there's a couple of them here that I got to take back. But um, we uh, put a had to put a couple of new tile in uh, today because I had big holes in them. But uh, some of the things are still here, and uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun for you to see the end of the road of uh, Pot Pleasant Hope. We spent eight years here, and uh, look what's up here. We've kept that, yeah. 
Yeah, Tim and Terry will be happy about that. But uh, in true ham spirit, um, I still left one of the antennas up, and I have a 7300 that I've been on the air with each morning on my AM group, getting fantastic reports, by the way. The 7300 is unbelievable on AM. But I just thought, I just got, to, I was watching the show, and I thought, I wonder if this will work. I've never had the laptop here, so thanks for letting me barge in, but uh, uh, we don't want to say uh, uh, a nice goodbye to, to uh, Pleasant Hope. <laughs> So there we go, man. And by the way, last uh, that, that last week that show with the ladies, oh my goodness, that was so good. So there you go. And, uh, Thank you. We'll be back in Belva next week with a decent signal and a new switcher, George. Got that switcher work. So thank you. <laughs> All right. The only well, thing I can say is that a, a, only a true ham would leave your last radio up in your last antenna until the very last minute. Um, uh, you got to do what you got to do to make sure you can get on the air. So, uh, well, that's a pretty empty room there, Bob. Thanks for sharing that with us. And goodbye, Pleasant Hope. But uh, we look forward to much more from your new ham shack. Yeah, this is where the pine board was born, so we have to pay a little homage to that. <laughs> Greetings to everybody. It's been a lot of fun. We'll be back next week in Belle Belle, and uh, thanks for letting me barge in on you guys and gals, okay? Absolutely. Anytime. Okay. Well, so Don and I have been talking about uh, WA6ITF and uh, you can't actually call it a special event because it, it wasn't registered as a special event. It doesn't matter. It was special to yeah. all of us that operated. Um, yeah, it was just, it was an activation, a really cool activation to celebrate, uh, you know, five years of, of Bill being gone and uh, to do it on his birthday. It was one of those things that I happened to be looking at the calendar and, and I noticed with like two weeks ahead, I'm like, wow, Bill's birthday's coming up. We should do, we should really activate. And so that's kind of, it was one of those quick spur of the moment. Um, oh, this is coming up. Let's do this. So, yeah, Amanda, go ahead. Uh, you've got some. You've got some cool stuff to share with us. I do. I have some audio. Um, first of all, I want to talk while I'm looking for this uh, file. I, um, as I was working as a ITF, um, this ham came in and sounded great. By the way, and I think he was in California. And he, he was just very nonchalant about, well, I know you kind of got some people waiting for you, so I'll, I'll step out of here and say 73. And then he said this thing. He said, and I've been a ham for 70 years, so I understand how this works. I said, wait, hold, whoa, stop everything. I don't have a recording of this. I wish I did. I, I've been searching and I don't. But it was so cool. He was like, yeah, I'm going to be, I've been a ham for 70 years come May. So... I don't meet many people that have been a ham for 70 years. What about you, Don? No, that's uh, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> wow, 70 years as a ham. I mean that that beats uh, that beats Heil. Yeah. I don't think Heil Heil's not been a ham for 70 years, and Gordo's not been a ham for 70 years. That's a what do you think, Heil? That's a pretty good milestone, isn't it? Yeah, 1956 is when I came aboard, and uh, it's been. Uh, Wonderful ever since. Yeah. He was he said he was fifteen when he first got licensed and um just just amazing. Um I couldn't believe it. And then so he went away and then everybody else that I contacted after that was still the same. Oh my gosh, you got you just talked to somebody that's been licensed for 70 years. I'm like, I know, right? This is this is amazing. So anyhow, I have some pretty cool audio. It's not very long, but um I'll Try. Hopefully, this will work. Um, stand by one. That's great, Amanda. You're uh, five nine plus here as well. I'm just running the uh, barefoot with seventy watts on my nine nine one with the homemade uh, dipole antenna. But I would know that voice from anywhere. <laughs> there from Ham Nation. Enjoyed the last episode, as a matter of fact. And uh, I know what what you're doing, what you're doing there with the uh, WA six ITF. Good to hear you in there, man. Then play to make contact. Anyhow, that I thought that was really special, and um, I made about 115 contacts, which was a lot of fun. 
And uh, the the fact that a lot of people depend on listening to that on their um, local repeaters. Uh, I I had no idea, Don, how many people rely on getting their AR news line on their Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Yeah. I mean, it's it's incredible, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's really cool, really cool to be a part of it. Um, and I want to tell you, I uh, uh, doing the, the three days because I did Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And um, um, Bob, first off, thank you for such a great product. This thing right here absolutely rocked uh, my world for uh, for doing the uh, the WA6 ITF activation. I wanted to show you, Bob, something that I found at a recent ham fest that uh, actually still works pretty good. You, uh, you remember the Quiet Phone Pro that came out, what was that, 10 years ago? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I found right. one with it's the, with the rare product. microphone. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, sounds pretty good. It'll work good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good deal. Yeah, I like it. I just had to have it. I figured, you know what, the price was right, and uh, yeah. Yeah, pretty pretty cool little, way, uh, little little set of headphones. So those look. By really the way, nice. Don, Don, um, Bill Pasternak first contacted me in 1958. He was in an airplane flying somewhere around New York, and we have been friends ever since. I was uh, a lot of help in getting Westlink started. Yeah. And I uh, had it uh, on the, one of the local repeaters there in southern Illinois. And that really started the whole thing. And Bill and I have been, we were together all those times. And uh, yeah. I really miss him because he, he's, uh, he's, uh, he did so much for this hobby. And I appreciate everybody helping to continue that. Well, you see what's over my shoulder here, what his daughter, his daughter Kelly uh, sent to me. And I have the one from the front as well. So... Uh, yeah, we're just honored to have this in the shack uh, to represent uh, Bill and, and everything else. So uh, I will be the caretaker of this um, uh, for for the club, for the Amateur Radio Newsline, Amateur Radio Club. Um, but uh, yeah, the WA6ITF uh, license plate will have a, a place of honor back there uh, behind me here on Ham Nation. And, and, and in fact, it's kind of cool. John Amadeo uh, from uh, Last Man Standing, the producer, he sent me when they rebuilt the set this year. You may notice that some of those, a lot of those QSL cards are gone. Well, the one QSL card that stayed up was Bill's old WA6ITF card with a satellite on it. And I just thought that was just a really, really cool honor. So um, it's, it's amazing how many people uh, Bill touched and uh, what uh, the hobby meant to him and, and now – what he means to the hobby, so we're uh, we're thrilled to carry on uh, in his legacy. We really are. Absolutely, and I can't say um, there's nobody more passionate about it than you, Don, because I listened to you when you were on Forty Meters, and you were in and out for me. But what I heard, you were so sweet and so kind, and talking about Amateur Radio Newsline and Bill, um, so heartful. So we really appreciate it. Um, all right, so I had some questions for Marty, but uh, we dropped Marty to get Bob on tonight, which we really loved, by the way. So I'll just go over the nets that we're going to have. Um, and also, thank you so much, everyone, for all of your kind comments for Ladies' Night. Uh, these, first of all, the the education level here is beyond me. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. T, uh, Valerie... You get Jerry and Amy. Then we had Karen. I just, uh, it blew most people away. So we look forward to doing this more often. I promise, not every three years. I promise. Well, we're going to do it more. And we're going to get some hidden gems in there that none of you guys know. And um, oh, hopefully really introduce these ladies out there in the world. And Mel Melanie was I can't say enough about her. She really didn't want to be on. And uh, we we begged, pleaded. We might have paid her. Um, but she did get on and she was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and she's, she she's was so great. Beautiful. She's so beautiful. It was really nice to have her on. And uh, she, she, she speaks very well. And she looks right into the camera, which I always find hard to do. And she just did it like a pro. 
for her first time. So Melanie, thank you so much for uh, joining us and you did a great job. Um, so, okay, Nets, uh, we have D-Star going on on 14 Charlie. We have DMR on 31012. And I do believe we have 80 or 75 meters on 3905 and 40 meters. If Kevin's up and running and if propagation's good, he's on 7192. So uh, that's all I have for tonight. Don, I'm going to let you close it up. Okay, I have one more thing to add about uh Ham's gone YL 2.0 last <laughs> week. I, uh, I I didn't get to see the show live. Dawn and I went out to dinner uh, on a rare Wednesday night. She was also uh, happened to be off, didn't work late. So uh, it seems like Tuesdays and Wednesday, Wednesdays are her nights off here lately. So we went in, uh, to dinner. And um, the next morning, Thursday morning, I woke up about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, got out of bed, and I said, I'm going to watch the show. And I punched it up. And it was amazing. I was, I was, uh, I was glued. I was absolutely riveted. Um, Jerry and Amy, of course, are amazing. Doctor T, the questions that you asked uh, Tamitha about the the colors of the sun in those images and how she broke it down so that anybody could understand it, just, just absolutely. Uh, I mean, I was slack jawed. And then when when Karen Eve Murray started talking about Bill, I was sitting here with tears he, running I was down too. my face. <laughs> and um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, you, you spoke about the, the, the passion um, th that I have for this, for this whole newsline thing. Well, Bill, you know, he, he, he tagged me like literally I, I, I was a brand new ham. I'd been a ham like two months and he's like, you need to be a part of this. And I'm like, oh, okay. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And in the 20 years that I knew him, he, was more than a friend. He was a mentor. He was like um, an older brother, like a crazy uncle. Um, I have so many, so many Bill stories um, that uh, we actually we we coined a term. Uh, You've been Pasternacked, and that was there was one day when we were driving to Huntsville. It was me and we had picked up Bill in Birmingham, Alabama, at the home of David Black, kb 4 KCH from the uh, Southeastern Bureau. And it was it was me and a couple of three hams from New Orleans, and we were going to Huntsville. We picked up Bill in Birmingham for the hour and a half drive north to Huntsville, and Bill's just going. I don't think he shut up the whole time. He just he talked and talked and talked, and you know, of course, he knew everyone and talked about everyone that he knew. And we had to put in a, a CD of of Broadway show tunes because that was his passion. And we're driving <laughs> along, and it, I had sure. this little. I had this little. It was one of the first GPSs that I ever had. Um, it was, uh, I forget what it was, but it, it wasn't like the GPS that you have now. This was years ago and we're driving along and all of a sudden it, the, the GPS chirped up and said, uh, uh, you know, turn, turn right at the next exit. And I didn't hear it. And so I, I'm listening to Bill and we're rolling along and, and, uh, talking. And next thing I know, somebody in the back seat, uh, Steve, I think in, in, uh, N5SC says, Hey, weren't you supposed to turn back there? I said, Oh no, the exit's coming up. And so Bill is continuing to talk. And all of a sudden, we hit the state line. <laughs> so we had to turn around and go and and go back because we had been pasternacked. <laughs> so I love the man. I, I miss him. There's not a there's not a day goes by that I don't need to ask him a question about something. And uh, yeah, just I, I love the guy. And uh, yeah, miss him, miss him so much. And for his daughter to help us get the call sign, and then she said, "I've got something I'm going to send you." I have, I had no idea what it was. She said, "But I've been looking for somebody or a good place to put these, and you guys need them." And these came in the mail today, and I'm just, I'm beside myself with. Them. Aww. <sighs> I don't know what yeah. to say. But anyway, um, uh, I'm going to shut up before I start crying again. But um, <laughs> anyway, just, just, yeah. This hobby has given back to me so much and none more than Bill Pasternak. And I mean, anyone who, who has spent five minutes with the guy and especially, well, you know, Bob, you've known him for decades and there's just, there was nobody better. There was nobody better. We had a lot of fun together. We were uh, uh, the, uh, there were five or six of us at Dave Bell uh, chose as the uh, Hollywood QRP club. And I said, well, he called me and said, we want to do this. I said, well, I, I don't work QRP and I don't do much of contesting. And that's okay. 
So in his backyard, there was Bill, uh, several other really big contesters. And uh, so he said, well, we're going to put you and Walsh in here. So Joe and I were <laughs> the founding members of the Hollywood Hills QRP Club. And if you go to the ARRL, there's a bench right at the front. When you enter the front door, that bench is uh, got Bill and uh, they're all gone except me. Oh, my goodness. It's just Joe and I. Oh, that, that's it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we had started that, and we could be here all night talking about Bill's stories. But he was one of a kind, and Am Radio misses him big time. Yeah. Thank you, Don, for keeping him alive. Well, Absolutely. you know, it's, it's a... It's a it's a team effort, and there, there ain't no I in team, so it, it ain't just me. It's it's everybody. Believe me, um, we're we're doing our best to follow in his footsteps. And Dave Bell, that that's another one. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the uh, those classic ARRL films about amateur radio, those were pretty much all directed by Dave Bell, and a lot of them were were written and produced, uh, at least partially, by Bill Pasternak. Uh, that was their thing. Um, about uh, you know producing those, so and like we could go on and on and on and on and on. Dave Bell, in fact, yeah. was uh, on the very the very last that we did amateur radio newsline town hall meeting uh, in uh, in Dayton, back at Hera Arena. Um, uh, I was uh, thrilled to uh, join uh, Dave on stage as we recounted uh, uh, behind the scenes adventures in in producing those. Uh, amateur radio or those uh, those amateur radio films for the ARRL, just uh, just amazing. Well, anyway, um, that we, we could go on and on and on. And, and uh, Victor wants to go home, and my wife wants me to come in there and watch TV. So uh, we'll uh, we'll put put the wraps on it for tonight. Uh, Bob, thanks for popping in. We appreciate you, Amanda. Uh, great job as always with the uh, chat room. Uh, Marty Soloway, NN1C, talking about Yoda. Thanks for uh, jumping in here, Marty. Uh, appreciate you being on. And, of course, George, uh, man, none better than you as far as the smoke and solder stuff. Anything more to add, uh, George? Uh, just, I will add a Bill Pasternak story just just real briefly here. You know, I had never spoke with him before. He uh, called me up one night on Skype, and I don't know how long we talked, but it was a long, long time. And that's when um, we worked on the April Fool's uh, bit several years ago on the uh, turbo and tabulator antenna uh -huh. pointing system. And he, he said, don't tell Bob, don't tell Gordo, you know, <laughs> don't tell anything, anybody about it. I'm going to send you the script and, and you put it together. And we did that. But the, the thing that always sticks in my mind about Bill, Bill knew how to work on videotape machines. And and he did that for a long time. If you've ever done that, then you know what I'm talking about. It takes somebody with uh, some real patience and skill to keep those things going. But uh, yeah, we we really miss him. So I'm I'm glad to have known him the the short while that I did. Uh, that's yeah. all I've got. We'll see you here next week, Bob. It sounds like you're in a cave out there, but you know, you strip out all the gear and, and what you got, you know, that's, that's how it is. Yeah, hey. This is it, baby. That's why I covered the walls and Belleville with felt there almost. So <laughs> got a cop to stop all of this echo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. At least for here, I want you all to, uh, be with me to turn the lights out for the last time tonight here uh, in the room that we spent eight years together in. So we'll be back next week. I'm not going away, but this is gone. Very good. Well, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a great eight years over there, and it's uh, uh, on to new things. And one more quick thing about Bill. If you ever heard Bill talk, you know he had a really, really thick Brooklyn accent. You could take the boy out of Brooklyn, but you couldn't take Brooklyn out of the boy. And I actually got to use his favorite phonetic for his call sign, and I'll leave you with this. His phonetic was, Whiskey Alpha 6, I talk funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I do, too. I do, too. Damn, yeah, yeah, I talk funny. And uh, and with that, we'll uh, say goodnight. And uh, to all of you who got in the uh, ARN ARC uh, special event, uh, Bill's birthday party log, thank you. Uh, we're working on QSL cards. We got a few cards in already, so uh, we'll get those out in the mail to you just as soon as we can. And so, for uh, for everybody here who works on Ham Nation, uh, both here in front of and behind the scenes, uh, Victor and everybody else at Twit, 
We thank you. We love you. And we appreciate you being here and uh, giving us a reason to uh, to join you on Wednesday nights. And uh, we hope to continue this for as long as you'll have us. So uh, thanks to all of our sponsors as well, because we couldn't do it without them. And we wouldn't do it without you. So uh, we'll see you next week. Good night, everybody.